Okay, so this is the video on solubility. Here we're going to be focusing on what makes a gas, liquid, or solid soluble in a solvent. And then later in the semester, we actually come back to this unit of solubility and we start calculating how soluble are things really. So when we talk about solutions, we're going to really need to understand how temperature, pressure, enthalpy, all of these things are going to interact to really make things soluble. Now in the last unit we talked about enthalpy. If something, if the overall energy change of making a solution was negative, the solution formed. If it didn't, oh well. Now we're going to be looking at temperature, pressure, um, agitation, that sort of thing. So for this unit, uh, for this video, we're going to be focusing on gas, liquid, and solid solutes. Now, solubility is just how much of a solute can be dissolved in a solvent. It is the maximum concentration that can be dissolved before you have solid or excess just falling out, before you see precipitation. And so generally, when we think of something sol is dissolving or soluble, what we do is we add that NaCl or sugar or what have you to the water and we watch it you know go from solid to an aqueous form. So when you have an unsaturated solution it means that it has less than the maximum present. It is something like a tea that is only slightly sweet or you know uh, along those lines. Now, when you have a saturated solution, it has just the right amount of solute dissolved in terms of what can be dissolved. No more is going to fit no matter what you do, but it has just as much as it possibly can. Now, if you want to make something that is super saturated, super saturated really just means it has more than what should be dissolved in it. Now you can't just you know stir in more and more sugar. It's not how it works. You have to make these under a different set of conditions. So if you wanted to make super saturated sugar solution, what you would do is you would heat up the water, add lots and lots of sugar, and then when you cool it down you have more than what you normally would. Consider like tea. If you add sugar to iced tea, the sugar particles fall to the bottom and then you get crunchy sips of tea from your straw. On the other hand, if you add sugar while it's hot, you can add lots more and it all dissolves. And so that's kind of how you could make a super saturated solution is you would heat it up or put it under a set of conditions where you can dissolve a lot and then come back and change it so that it shouldn't have that much. Now super saturated solutions are pretty unstable. And so I just kind of want to show you because this is a concept that people, we, well, you can use on a regular basis if you want to. This is uh, sodium acetate. It is a, nope, of course not. Um, it is a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. Now because this typically is very unstable, I'm going to make it bigger so at least you can see it. If you add a single crystal, like a piece of sand, here they're going to add a piece of uh, the same sodium acetate compound. When you do that, it immediately causes crystallization. And so you can kind of watch. They're going to use tweezers and get one crystal. take it over. As soon as it is added, it is going to give crystallization where all of that solute that it's super saturated, so it has more than it should, but all of it is going to immediately start to precipitate out. Now, crystallization like this, super saturated solutions like this are used for a nu no, numerous things. Um, specifically, you know, the first thing I can think of is rock candy. You heat up some water, you add a ton of sugar, some flavoring, 
you cool it down and as the uh, water starts to evaporate you get a crystal it starts to seed it you end up getting really nice suckers that form over a while now some things like this are very very quick other things can take a little bit of time it really depends I've seen uh, the equivalent of like paper snowflakes where you can make a salt solution put a piece of paper you know attached to it and it'll build the snowflake over you know a couple days generally uh, the people that spend their life working on crystallization like this they prefer very slow crystals you kinda saw this was really fast which works for our lecture the slower the crystal forms the more perfect it is so it's a very time-consuming process if you really want to get a nice beautiful crystal to form so when we talk about solubility the amount of solute that can be dissolved we have to consider four things the structure what kind of intermolecular forces are there we talked about this a little bit in the last video of you know whether a solution would form we need the solute and solvent to have similar polarity similar interactions and that way they will prefer each other rather than themselves now in addition we can consider temperature if you've ever tried to drink a flat soda I'm sorry mm -mm, that's not no if you've ever tried to drink a hot soda the solubility of the gas has gone down it's gonna be kinda of flat and disgusting and so temperature also plays a role on solubility agitation if you've dropped a two liter of soda um, you can kinda of see all the gas comes flying out so you don't want to open it right away because you know that would be bad and then pressure is also an issue so let's go into each type of solute separately now in general gases are going to be most soluble under low temperature the colder it is the better which is why um, well, well, well yeah so as you increase temperature um, the solubility of gases decreases now some things like helium don't really change much but most everything has a pretty dramatic decline here um, same thing can be said for agitation the more you stir a soda or something with dissolved gas in it the more the gas that bubbles out so and then the final thing I want to say is high pressure the reason when you open a soda it's you hear that shh is because they've added so much additional CO2 that you know that the bubbles are going to be in the actual liquid themselves and not uh, above the surface okay now what does that really mean for us in terms of solubility of gases one of the problems that you'll see is if you have to get a fish tank or well, if you have a fish tank you I like fish tanks but no um, if you have a fish tank or some other area where you have aquatic life you typically have to maintain a temperature below a certain amount when the temperature gets too low I'm sorry no when the temperature gets too high like here this is next to a factory I forget where uh, what will happen is there's less oxygen in the air the fish and wildlife and other not in the air in the water all right let me restart that I'll come back and delete this <laughs> as the temperature of the water goes up the solubility of the gas goes down in the liquid so here near a heat source there is it's it's too hot because of the factory runoff the water does not have enough oxygen in it because it's too hot so the wildlife is dying because they're not able to breathe you can also kind of watch um, and just glasses of water if you leave a glass of water sitting on the table sometimes you'll see the bubbles start to aggregate together um, as the temperature of the water goes up and it's just because it's starting to come out of solution a little bit now in terms of pressure Henry's law says that the solubility of gases is going to be maximized with an increase in pressure so it's going to be directly related where the concentration of gas that can be dissolved is equal to some constant times the partial pressure of the gas above the solution so the more you add of that gas the more soluble it is so the more co2 they put in a soda bottle the more soluble the co2 will be in the solution okay. 
on. There we go. Now, guys, I'm not going to have you calculate this. I just want you to know the solubility of gases is going to be maximum under low temperature, low agitation, and high pressure. And that that is part of the high pressures from Henry's law. In terms of liquids, oh, by the way, notice there's nothing here about structural effects. Um, Nonpolar CO2 gas is dissolved in water. It's not a big deal. Because it is not directly interacting that way, it's it's not as it's not as troublesome. So these are the three things that affect the solubility of gas. On the other hand, when we get to liquids, when we mix liquids and they are soluble, we typically call it being miscible, meaning they mix very well. These are going to be very dependent on the structural effects. Here it has to be polar and polar or nonpolar nonpolar or they're not going to want to interact at all. If they don't they will just separate like here and here. You're not going to have um, a nice mixture. Okay. Now who, two hydrophilic liquids, water loving liquids will form a solution, two hydrophobic liquids will form a solution, but just like in the last video when we were talking about nonpolar and polar they will not combine here either. The solution will not form. We say that it's going to be immiscible. You're going to be able to see those levels, kind of like oil and vinegar salad dressing. Okay. Now, we can also talk a little bit about temperature and pressure, but there's not as much of an effect here. You know, temperature, if it goes up a little bit, they'll mix a little bit better. Um, pressure doesn't really have an effect at all. Um, agitation, I mean, can help, but it doesn't hurt here. So, solids, on the other hand, are uh, another one that have really interesting takes. Here, the three things that affect the solubility of a solid is temperature, agitation, and structural effects. So here. For most solids, you want a high temperature. The higher the temperature, the more that dissolves. Again, I always use iced tea because this is the South, and that's what we do is drink sweet tea most of the time. So if you add sugar to iced tea, it floats to the bottom. It's not soluble. You add the sugar before you add the ice, voila, it is all of a sudden dissolved, and you get a really nice sweet tea. Um, yay. High agitation, if you want to get something to, to mix or to dissolve, you have to stir it. The higher you, the, the more you stir, the more that is going to get the stuff dissolved. If you do end up having an unstable, super saturated solution, at that point you don't want to touch it at all. Um, but compounds, uh, are solid compounds, solid solutes are going to be most soluble, again, just like liquids. Polar and polar, nonpolar and nonpolar, like dissolves like. They have to want to mix with each other rather than by themselves. Now, guys, I'm not going to test you on ex exceptions here. The point is I want you to know that in general, as the temperature of, goes up, the solubility increases for solid solutes. Okay? Now, you can also have things like this. This is a super saturated solution. It's really kind of nice to, to what they do is they have these super saturated solutions and then a little disc. That little disc has got a seed on it. As soon as you pop the disc, the crystallization forms. So again, agitation will help things get into solution and make them soluble. Solid, solid solutes are most soluble with agitation. Um, but when you're dealing with super saturated solutions, they are unstable. So just be aware of that. That is it for this video. Wow. I hope it was helpful.